Good morning. Thank you very much for having invited me to this event. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the Urban Landscape Institute and the organizers uh, uh, for having invited me, and it's a pleasure to be here at the St. Paul Hospital to be able to discuss uh, Domenech Montané and his uh, work with applied arts and combining artists with uh, different uh, crafts and, uh, well, participating in the restoration of uh, the Mermaid's Hall was a pleasure. It was quite a few years ago. I was younger, so it was really, really very exciting, to be frank. I will make a, a very small presentation. A very, there are many slides, uh, but uh, the slides are there for you to enjoy what uh, Domenech y Montané did at the España Hotel. Uh, it's basically images. I lead a company called Chroma. We carried out the historical and artistic survey of the hotel before it was restored. Because uh, when we were asked, when we were chosen to lead the project, First of all, of explaining the applied arts that were used there and where and how at that time the hotel was really in a very poor condition. It was uh, actually quite run down and it had been bought by a company that is also the owner of the Comtas de Barcelona Hotel and they wanted to create a really boutique hotel and make it a five-star uh, venue and we wanted at that time to highlight what Domenech Montané had done at that time so that it would open again uh, in full splendor. It's close to the Ramblas, it's right behind the Liceu um, Opera Theatre and the building um, was built in the 19th century. It started being a, a hostel, a hostel. Uh, uh, then it combined uh, two buildings, and when they decided to make changes in uh, 1900, they asked uh, Domenico Montanet to renovate the whole uh, facility, the whole venue, the hotel. And one of the conditions was that he had to turn two houses from the 19th century into a luxury hotel, something which was quite different from what he had before, and he had to adapt to the existing architectural structures without demolishing anything. In 1903-04, uh, the hotel received uh, an award for the best uh, interior refurbishment, and uh, he found these spaces where there was, first of all, a hall. Uh, that's well, we found that there was a smoker's room that probably wasn't there at the time. And the Arnau Hall, which is where they have the fireplace, and and the provinces, uh, the provinces dining room, and between the well, from the hall you moved on to this uh, patio, this sort of uh, uh, court, inner courtyard with scraffito, and behind that, after that, we find uh, the mermaid's hall. It is thought that there were some baths there and that uh, the mermaid's uh, uh, hall was a sort of a memento of the baths, and it was also a reference uh, to the uh, Japanism of the waves and uh, the Japa Japanese influence that Casas had at the time. This is a list of all the craftsmen uh, that uh, Domenech used to build on this. So we had uh, painters, gilders, uh, very often they are separated when they apply gold leaf, but all the gilding at the España Hotel is a gold paint. It's not gold leaf, so we, that's why we put them together. Uh, all the plaster um, plasters. Uh, there were some uh, small vaults uh, from the 19th century, which uh, were then plastered uh, to give them uh, a 19th century look. Uh, stone cutters, uh, ceramic artists. We have, uh, for instance, Trencadis format ceramics. Uh, and we also have 
concave ceramics. There are many different kinds of ceramics which were used in different halls. And then we have the mosaic artists that put them together. We also have the Roman mosaic with the one by one tesseras. It's not done by ceramic artists or potters because it's done in stone. Then we also had the iron workers, the iron smiths. In the staircase, well, we have this shapes we see there. Uh, we also had lots of woodworkers because uh, all the coatings and in, uh, in the ceilings. Uh, we also had the varnishers uh, and uh, we also had the plumbers uh, and brass artists uh, because there were so many different kinds of uh, lamps in different halls. So then we also had two fantastic artists, uh, Eusebi Arnau, the author of this uh, alabaster fireplace in Arnau Hall, and then Ramon Casas, the painter. I've read this in different uh, studies. It isn't sure that he was the author, but it is said that he was the one who designed and devised uh, the mermaid's hall, especially in the waves uh, you see. Well, it reminds you of <laughs> these waves are across the whole perimeter of uh, the hall and they have this clear Japanese influence. And then we also have these columns with carvings, uh, with uh, plant uh, motifs, with uh, coat of arms uh, and with uh, dragons, uh, plenty of them. Then the, the Stucco artists, they participated especially in the staircase well and also in the vault of the staircase we also call it in in the inner yard uh, which we call the good morning yard usually probably they have graffito painted with tempera paint but then th there's another huge uh, st stucco at the mermaid's hold these are the paintings on the ceilings uh, with uh, gold and tempera. And the tempera has certain complexities. This hotel uh, uh, had been run down and they had lots of humidity, they changed color and they have fungal attacks. Uh, so by the time we came, we got there, we were seeing many paintings that were, for instance, brown when they should have been white, or, or pink when they should have been green, or the other way around, and it was really difficult to, to, to turn that. For instance, here we have a small vault that had lost all the coloring, and we just see some remains of the colors at the, at the bottom, at the end. This is an example of the ceramics and the Noya flooring at the upper part of the mermaids. Uh, there's a, a four-story mermaids. We tried uh, to preserve uh, whatever ceramics uh, we found. Uh, we glued them and we, well, we cleaned them up and we glued them and replaced them again. So we have mosaics uh, both in the stairwell, staircase well and also at the lobby all the way to the inner courtyard. Then we have this uh, ceramic mosaic as well in the mosaics uh, dining room, of course. Here we see the iron work and especially this coup de fouet that is only found uh, in the bottom part in, in the ground floor. This is repeat a motif that is repeated. This is in the baths room. This is in the patio in the courtyard, and this is in the staircase. So you, we see the repetition of this motif. Then the woodworkers. This is the wainscot of the sirenas of the mermaids uh, hall, and then the moldings uh, that go all the way to the mermaids to the mermaid's uh, hole, and then the ceramics, and then the work with the gauch, gauch uh, and the different coats of arms, uh, and then the lamps, spectacular lamps. Uh, not all of them have been preserved, uh, and 
Some of them have been modified over time, and with the preservation, well, with the refurbishment, some of them uh, have been moved to different locations. Uh, some from the Mermaid's Hall went to the Arnau Room and the other way around, and, uh, well, mosaics were left as supporting elements, but they, well, different kinds of lamps were, were installed. Some of them brought from other halls of the same palace. For instance, here at the lobby, you can see that the floors had this sort of uh, mosaic, marble mosaic um, surfaces, and on the sides uh, there were some tiles, uh, hexagonal tiles. But this pavement went from all well, run from all the hall. It was a sort of like a rug that went all the way down, and then there was an impressive uh, wooden uh, ceiling which was uh, cut with uh, a carving gouge. And then we also have the bronze lights. This is uh, the wooden, the wooden ceiling. It was repainted originally. It was wooden wood, varnished with gold paint. In the area um, carved with the gauge. This is the impressive gouge with the gouge sorry this is the impressive ceiling uh, we found it with this coloring it wasn't the same polychromy and it wasn't the original polychromos uh, colors and this is the pavement with uh, the dragons and uh, the plant motifs uh, that framed those sort of rugs mosaic rugs uh, these were 25 square meters uh, of mosaic uh, for this area and they asked us to do that but Oh, to redo it, but then it wasn't finally installed, so we don't really know where it was. We documented this through photographs. We were able to, well, to copy some of the photographs in small and then zoom it out, and this is an example of what was done. Let me an anecdote. I was doing this at home because I was, I was um, sick, and the doctor told me that I had to do something to, to get cured, uh, to improve my health, and it was really enjoyable to be able to do that. This is all the carving gauge work and the marbles that were also carved and the gold paint inside the indented spaces. Here we see several, three examples, and they say things like welcome, have a nice day, or have a nice trip, or I hope you had a nice trip. This is this graffito we found at the lobby. Everything was dark. But, and when we started removing the paint, we found uh, really lively colors. All the woodwork around the hotel had changed. Uh, all the openings were really high. They had a, a stripe of glass. And in some areas, this had been painted, basically painted or blocked. For instance, in the Arnau Hall, this was painted, but all the openings in the ground floor had this very high size, this very big size. Domenech in Montané uh, used lots of uh, flower motifs and uh, coats of arms, so dragons, uh, towers, uh, shields, coats of arms. Uh, you will see that the dragons uh, from Castella y Leo region and uh, the carved stones, uh, the lamps. He uses the columns uh, as uh, a sort of a girder to install the lamps. This is the old lamp which was changed. Uh, there were some crowns here and I don't think that they have these at the moment. I think they've changed them as well. This is what we found now. They In the, in the end, they decided to install uh, San Vicente's stone floor. They painted the wood black again, and uh, well, the feeling that you had when you went in the lo into the lobby, we intended to to refine. Uh, well, we intended to recover that sort of a uh, very gaudy entrance that uh, Domenic had designed, and now it's much more, uh, much more sober. This is a sort of uh, good morning and good evening images. Uh, they are 
quite munch like we would say there seem to be a skylight here they seem to be two different spaces and here you can find a different mosaic that was the continuation of the same mosaic from the lobby until you go into the mosaics uh, uh, dining room or the mermaids dining room and then here we have these faces that uh, remind us of the medusa it's this is almost like an uh, like a preamble preamble of what we will find in the mermaids uh, hall and what we found uh, when we studied the hotel i was younger i didn't have the knowledge that i have nowadays and we missed something there had been uh, a cleanup done in the past and we realized that between the old painting the old photographs uh, well the painting behind the stucco had been lost uh, Domenic did this fantastic uh, graffito with animals and plants and so on and he used uh, tempera but tempera of course washes away with water so I think that there was a first intervention that uh, damaged the polychromy and the colors that uh, filled these spaces. This is magnificent. We have some images that show these uh, color changes in the different graffitos. Here we repeat the same, we see the repetition of the motives in the wrought iron um, railing. This was uh, a skylight that was finally removed from the mermaid's hall. This is the hotel once it's finished uh, with a staircase well and they installed new marble and this mosaic spaces have uh, well a uh, sort of lightning lighting that is different from what what um, Domenic Montaner wanted i think this uh, is different from what the author really wanted we didn't want it to to have this used uh, as small samples that then uh, showed off what it was well now the railings are black they used to be golden they had a color now everything seems to be well ironwork seems to be always black but that's not the case because in modernist time we found red green uh, golden everything except for black and now uh, black seems to be much more fashionable for fashionable for ironwork this is the arnau hall it was really Mm, destroyed when we found it. Uh, this furniture wasn't there. We had uh, this uh, polychrome small vaults, uh, uh, iron or metal beams that were also polychrome. The stonework, uh, this sort of railing is carved stone. The huge uh, Arnau uh, fireplace, uh, plus uh, these wooden panels and uh, these really elaborate benches that were not there anymore there was a lamp the fireplace was still in there fortunately enough but all of these small vaults had been painted but they still preserved the background colors uh, the fireplace uh, was really dirty and uh, people smoked uh, indoors uh, and uh, well there were gas lamps so everything was really dirty and uh, and uh, smoky but anyway we cleaned it up this was a piano there was a piano there so this was like a rest resting room for visitors uh, of the hotel here we see the little details and these are the impressive small vaults with polychrome uh, stone with shellac Tempera. Tempera is a pigment that you mix with some kind of uh, of glue. It could be, for instance, animal glue or egg or casein or milk casein. And we found that the different paintings on the beams uh, had this tempera that could have been almost milk based because it wasn't removed. However, the painting that we found in the small vaults uh, uh, were easy to eliminate. Uh, so he, that means that he used to combine uh, different th kinds of things. So this uh, casein um, tempera in uh, the in the small vault would have been complex. Uh, however, the glue-based uh, tempera 
um, coexists much better with plaster. However, if you're not careful, it can be blurred much more easily. So that means that he mastered those, those uh, techniques. Sorry, it wasn't shellac, but glue tempera. And there were also some velvet uh, fabrics on the walls and uh, of course that changed uh, and now this doesn't look like a modernist space this is uh, the wash basin the hand basin i wanted to underline this image because when i was young when i was uh, in high school and i was 16 i remember that I used to ask, well, to run away from school and uh, to ask to go to the toilet just to see this because I, I was so excited about that because it was a yeah this old run-down space and they had this wonderful uh, wash basin and on the ceiling you have this uh, uh, winged dragons uh, face to face uh, that I thought were so exciting and I I was really. Uh, I was really looking forward to going to this bathroom uh, like all the time and he it's amazing that the architect treated this so delicately as uh, well as the lobby and here look at the railing and this is uh, the water spout that they have installed right now they haven't made big changes there are some changes of course because for instance the walls are white because they used to be polychrome but at least the the basin uh, the wash basin has been left in place and i was really afraid that they would remove it this is the mosaic dining room we can walk in through here and it's on the side it's also called the provinces uh, dining room it, everything is uh, ceramic mosaic and and uh, woodwork this used to be the restaurant for uh, those well for everyone except for hotel guests so anyone who was uh, who came in for lunch they would be sent to this to this restaurant there is a lighthouse uh, sorry a skylight uh, and there were these uh, marble sidings uh, all of the small vaults, vaults are ceramic based just like in the mermaids uh, uh, hall there are these wooden panels which are coat racks and we find the same style at the mermaids hall and this is just for you to enjoy the venue this is wonderful but this is just for so that you can see the before and afters lights are the lights are the lamps are different this is from the mermaids uh, hall and they had these uh, bulbs which were totally different we couldn't find better pictures but in any case uh, this is uh, the beginning and the only thing that was left was this this doesn't look like a, like a lamp uh, and the lamp shades uh, are different and these are the impressive mosaics uh, some of them were quite damaged because of humidity the humidity had been so bad that it even uh, spoiled the glazing of uh, of the tiles uh, and these are the mosaics uh, it's just fantastic to be able to walk in there and see this i mean it, you just don't care if uh, they charge you uh, an awful lot of money for the menu because you can spend so much time just uh, gazing around that it's just uh, fantastic. Ceramics and wood. This is polychrome carved wood. So I guess that it was just crazy. This uh, amazing mixture of colors. Uh, we were not able to find out what were the original colors because it had been so damaged by the time we, we got there. And this is what it looks like nowadays. This is synthetic glass. It's uh, etched, mechanically etched. So it isn't really moving. It isn't so exciting. And uh, well, wood became black again. We tried to make it nicer. It was Melis wood. It was all varnished, varnished, sorry. And uh, when we uh, went into the old paint, uh, photographs, we realized that uh, the, the floor was herring, herringbone pattern, uh, and it was a wooden floor. And we believe that uh, they changed that later. I think that uh, Domenico Montané 
dressed up the the existing pre-existing building so we finally managed to convince everyone to have uh, this uh, wooden floor again and to install it following the herringbone patter be pattern because, well, this changes things a lot. And then we have uh, the stairwell case, the stairwell, the, the stairwell and the wash basin was behind. Everything was repainted with uh, plastic coatings these are where the mosaics uh, uh, look at what they look like now. In each landing, the mosaic was different. Uh, it combined animals and flowers. And in the end, the colors were not so... They were not so pale. They were not so... Everything was painted al seco, and all the red original paintings were removed. That's a pity. Uh, then you see this, and I, well, it's a bit sad. I really enjoyed uh, the study, but I wouldn't uh, love going back so much. This is uh, the nun's patio. This building is located in a 19th building 19th century building, so these railings are the same as uh, the ones we find in the facade. And uh, what Domenic does was to add uh, the Noya uh, tiles uh, everywhere he could. This was repainted. We found uh, that the they, they changed uh, the patio, of course. I didn't want to show this uh, awful thing, but the courtyard of this patio we found uh, some old uh, metal mechanisms the old uh, skylight was mobile it could be open up or closed down for ventilation and i thought we thought that was fantastic it's a good way to create ventilation and to avoid air conditioning and this said that this is a, an old trinket and that they wanted to remove it and to find something else and now this is what it looks like so they saved the 1900 but they placed again uh, well you don't see the holistic image of the courtyard and then you see the lamps these are the lanterns the original lanterns were different these lanterns used to be well were used for ventilation of the mermaid hall and then as the skylight could also be open then that could create an air draft as well so this was a ventilated architecture the way it was devised uh, at the time this is the mermaids hall the one we were able to restore ourselves and here we see some of the old paintings of what it looked like these are polychrome beams you can see that the lanterns uh, are polychrome and uh, they have the graffito here we see the wooden wainscot lots of applied and arts combined and this is just for you to understand what it looked like in the past this is a paint a picture just before i got there the ceiling combines polychrome beams uh, with as uh, graffito small vaults and i'm fascinated by by this whole um pieces I'm fish, and when I was told that I could restore this, uh, well, I was really, I was, I fell in love with the idea. These are impressive waves. That they, this graffito was in uh, one color, and then it had different uh, tempera colors. And this is the article of uh, Pila Cabañas explain of Pila Cabañas explaining that there's this combination uh, between casas and uh, the Japanese influence and Domenici Montane and uh, well, all this combination. And I think that this is quite plausible. These are the small vaults in the ceiling. These are the lamps which are now installed in. Arnau Hall, look at what they looked like. These were very lost. I will not be able to explain this today, but I mean, the small vaults were really damaged. We had to strip the paint uh, very slowly to avoid re uh, damaging the tempera painting and so on. This is what it looked like when we got there. It was really in bad condition with salt, full of salt and most moisture. 
This uh, is all fungi that should have been white, but it had uh, been molded and then oxidated. This restoration uh, lasted for six months. Uh, we had to use uh, plasters and so on. We had to clean it up with uh, vapor and with uh, plaster. There were lots of notches uh, and so on. Thank you very much, Luis. And uh, these are just paint photographs so that you can enjoy this. This is a part of the fish. But we, we really had to work hard uh, with the wainscot because it had to be removed. Uh, there was a, a, a brick facing and then this graffiti was done on top of it. This is the work we had to do with, uh, well, six months of work where we started fixing one thing after the other. Uh, the gold, uh, the uh, steel beams or the, the metal beams were really hard to to restore and here we have uh, the small volts and the lanterns they were we worked on them at the same time access was really difficult we could only go in there from the top patio and this is not the final painting the final picture because in in seco we had to redo everything we had uh, removed before all the white spots uh, that make uh, these waves so exciting and i think that's all thank you very much